You're listening to Actors with Issues with Juan Ayala, a podcast of actors, by actors, and for actors. In today's episode, we speak with two of the stars of the freebie comedy series Primo, Henry Esteve and Carlos Santos. Um, so firstly, I just want to say congrats on such a great show. I mean, it has been so fun seeing this. I mean, I'm like, I have like 12 aunts and uncles between both families. So I'm like, just feel seen <laughs> in this, all the opinions. So I'm curious, growing up, did either of you have those sort of extra parental figures in your life that um, are like the tios on, on Primo? Um, I... I had a lot of cousins growing up. I was the baby, but the the gaps weren't huge. But my brother was a, a extra parental figure. He was ten years older, so it was very much like a father figure in the house. I grew up with two older sisters, ten years apart, so they very much felt like they raised me. I, you know, uh, uh, from from the get go. I also was. Uh, because I was always the youngest in my family. Like I, I have older cousins that I never, I regarded them as uncles and aunts because they were like 30 years older than me. So there's a little bit of that, um, I felt. Uh, but I've always felt like a mascot growing up. You know what I mean? And I feel like yeah. that. Ryan is a mascot. And Ryan is the mascot. Ryan's the so it's perfect. Ryan's all this mascot. I didn't have to act that yeah. much. Uh, I was gonna, my next question was how similar would each of you say that you are to Ryan uh, and Mike? Uh, your characters on the show well like i said i was the youngest so i feel like i knew exactly what ryan was going to especially in the whole aspect of trying to prove yourself when you're the youngest you're always trying to be like i'm good enough listen please listen to me that was yeah. yep there you go. <laughs> i feel your pain <laughs> there it is. Right, this is the issue. Uh, i think there's the humor i think me and mike have a similar humor um some people, much, call humor, some, people some people call it humor, some people call it meanness. Just meanness, just <laughs> um, hostility. Hostility. There's a hostility that can come out. But I think generally, I, I'm i someone who really, I, I think my love language is like teasing people. Um, I must have not, I must have skipped that chapter in the book of love language. <laughs> Summer six. <laughs> is that an expanded? I think it counts as quality time. It's expansion pack, yeah. <laughs> But and yeah, that yeah. I think is the only real similarity. I'd like to think I'm much better at admitting when I'm wrong about things. And you know, with every type of role, um, you know, whether it's like a co-star or a series regular, like these roles, there's always something to be learned. Um, you know, as an actor and all of that. So, what would you say that you've each learned while working on Primo? In terms of uh... like in your personal life, what did you take away from? What did Ryan teach you about Carlos? Oh. That's a good question. For me, I think I became aware of how hard I am on the people I love and, and mm. really trying to do with that and, and how I, it's really just empathy and care. But uh, sometimes it, it can be read. Uh, it, it isn't the most helpful thing for somebody that needs advice. Yeah, I think mm. with Uncle Ryan is definitely like, again, from coming from that insecurity space of wanting to be heard and um, validated. Uh, and the things that you end up doing, I was able to see that uh, from, you know, from a third party perspective, we've all been guilty of some of the things that Uncle Ryan does on the show because of that, the lack of, you know, feeling or maybe the worth or being validated. So it's interesting to see that uh, in terms of like how I've grown personally and not because I've been there, you sure, in, in my life at some point, but it's good to see that, oh, you know, sometimes we do and say things that come from a place of lack and so it's good to, to know that uh, through therapy and a lot of work, you're able to uh, to grow. Is this the, is that? Is <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> I think we're uh, and, to grow. <laughs> yeah. Happy to see it. And, you know, uh, getting into the issues part of our show, um, you know, we always like to shed a little bit of light on the industry um, for our audience of young actors and whatnot. So you've both been in the industry for a bit. So I'm curious, what have you noticed has changed the most about entertainment since you first got started and, and pursuing being an actor? I think uh, we're getting to a point where, you know, um, uh, we're not getting as pigeonholed as we used to. I've um, mm -hmm. been doing this long enough where it was definitely something that was uh, something very scary. 
in terms of like your career because they're you, you know when you're starting out you're hoping to work but at the same time at least from my experience i was always worried that i was going to do something or get a role that were that was only going to be able to be seen in that certain way and i feel like uh, by the time i started working i think that that has changed and i feel like actors now are able to do other things like for example i used to be a host a long time ago and i was worried that nobody was going to accept me as, a, as an actor as a comedian i've been doing comedy my whole life but in terms of that transition uh i feel like it's way easier now and i feel like i see a lot of people doing multi disciplinary type uh multi hyphenates multi hyphenates and it's and it's accepted you know i feel like i see I like it's, it's encouraged accepted. at yeah. this point yeah um yeah i think that's a, a big one for how the industry's changed and I, I don't think you could just be an actor anymore i mean you know there's the timothy chalamet's of the world but like I think if unless you you have uh, you, you've got into that place really quickly, um, I, I just I don't think you can only be one thing. And I think now we have to kind of allow ourselves to be creative in other versions of the same art form and be storytellers. That's definitely um, a growing trend. I feel lots of actors are also writing and producing their own work and directing a short or you know to be a to act as a pilot and, and th th things like that so it's it's definitely a, a growing thing it almost feels like it's almost required yeah the key is we can't wait for 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 roles we have to right i feel like that's mm -hmm. all part of like but but you don't you can't put all your acting eggs in one basket you have to while you wait for your lot for this is a lottery while we wait for this wonderful role that we're we have to put in the work whether it's writing your own stuff or you know or getting comedy. A comedy for me, I feel like obviously has saved my life. Um, being able to get on uh, on stage, it, uh, it still allows me to work that muscle that then keeps chugging along for for the opportunities that I've had. And so by the time you know this the primo was available to me, I felt like I feel like I've been you know working towards it, and I, it really helps with imposter syndrome. <laughs> And uh, with, uh, I mean, that's been a huge topic on our show is, you know, we've been doing the, the show since, I mean, the beginning of the pandemic because actors had nothing but time. So mm -hmm. everyone was all of a sudden available. Uh, and that's been a huge topic is, is sort of dealing with imposter syndrome, especially with actors of color and from marginalized communities feeling like, you know, that they don't deserve to have the roles that they have and, and all of that. So um, I'm curious, what advice would you give to a young actor um, in 10 words or less? In how many words or less? Ten. Ten words or less. Uh, for me, it would be. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> uh, protect your your protect your protect your capacity to stay open hearted. I think the industry does a good job of uh, of making people kind of shut down and and feel bitter. And uh, I think that's really counterintuitive or counterproductive for work. That was way more than ten words, but the. It's okay. <laughs> got the part yeah. I'm not gonna do it in 10 words I'm telling you right now um, I'm so sorry okay. uh, I would say uh, have a healthy relationship with rejection and um, and also not to take things personal because I feel like a lot of times we hear some very negative things oh this is a hundred words I said it but then I'll explain it um, you know you hear from the industry and I feel like a lot of people you you, you're treated or you're regarded in a very certain way, but you're the only person that knows how far and how good you are. And so I think that even when you hear negative things about yourself in terms of your career, um, it shouldn't stop you because it's always you're, it's always a, around the corner, an opportunity to prove people otherwise. So I think yeah. it's, it's having a healthy connection to that that'll help. Hmm. It's having a connection to your self that's seven oh. yourself some work but yeah <laughs> <laughs> well gentlemen thank you so much for taking the time to chat listening and congrats on such a great show i can't wait for all the uncles of, of the world to to feel seen and and for you know all the young kids who have these big support systems um to you know show, i feel like uh people are gonna feel a little bit more grateful for for the people that are that are in their lives with the show so again okay, congrats thank you Juan. thank you brother all right. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to Actors with Issues on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, and visit our YouTube channel for full video interviews. Actors with Issues is executive produced and hosted by Juan Ayala. See you next time.